So get everybody in here. They're coming in, coming in. Just a reminder, guys, if you got any background noise and stuff, go ahead and mute, uh, mute yourselves. Okay. Um, just be mindful of that. We'll hear everything along the way. So still coming in. How's everybody doing? Good? Cool. Good. Hey, Christy. <laughs> How you doing there, Steve? Good. Good All to right. see you on your good to oh, see you yeah. on your. Happy to be um, here. It's already carved out a path of destruction, is it? There we go. Still coming, still coming. So guys, just a reminder, um, you know, to have yourselves muted. Um, if you have background noise, if not, you're okay. But um, we're doing this every Tuesday, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Mountain, where I'm at here in Colorado. And um, these have been good. They're all recorded. So we do put them on the... Uh, freedom team page but i would encourage you guys just come if you can come because it's interactive you know a lot of you know questions getting answered you know masterminding kind of throwing out ideas that kind of stuff so if you're here it's definitely better than just watching the recording um for sure but uh but let's go and get started so um again i'll just keep letting people in as they come so um definitely appreciate you guys' time um this will be good so um i'm gonna turn it over to sean sean is here in colorado sean slade um been a realtor for 20 years been at exp for two hit icon both years that he's been here so um doing some big things and and sean you know volunteered to train here today and go over some stuff so uh sean i'm gonna let you take it okay thank wow. you very much go ahead oh thanks uh, i appreciate being on the call this morning is everybody ready to go the energy going you excited about life yeah yeah sean sturk's excited yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm 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 really honored to have the opportunity to share a couple ideas. We've had we've been blessed in our real estate business, and um, I'll share a couple ideas. I'm I'm a little humbled because I know there's some on the call that are doing a mega volume. You know, I'm just uh, I'm just a little guy, but uh, we're we're excited we're excited to share a couple ideas with you. It's been exciting to hit the Icon with EXP, and uh, man, it's uh, what a, what an amazing blessing. But uh, you know, I I, I have a, a bunch of notes and. Uh, and there's a bunch of different directions I was ready to go last night. This morning, I had some weird ideas. Um, and so I kind of wanted to start a little bit different this morning, if we could. Um, and I, Jeff, you want to pull that video up? Uh, sure. A cu couple of thoughts I had. And one of the things I'd like you to consider this morning is, man, we are so darn blessed to be in one of the freest countries in the world and to be in an industry where we can... Uh, you know, we can we can set our path, we can chart our course, we can do what we want to do with our life. Um, I mean, real estate, what an amazing opportunity we have. Well, yeah, that combined with the freedoms we have in this country, wow, it's just it's just amazing. And could you just contemplate that for a minute? I just wanted to start with this this song. Um, go ahead, Jeff, kick it off. Cool. Jeff, if you can. Hope that showed it off. Did you say to stop it? Sure. No, no, can, can you turn it up just a bit if you can? Okay, I'll try. Can increase the volume just a bit? Yeah. Yeah. 
Special things I compile each one day to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. Thanks for putting that on, Jeff. Uh, you know, Bongo, but matter of fact, that's Matt and Savannah Shaw. That's one of the groups I listen to all the time. They are inspiring to me. And you know, obviously in, in real estate, some days there's some drama, right? And so to be able to put ourselves first thing in the right mindset, I think is one of the critical components that keeps us going. And uh, I have a couple songs I listen to. I read my scriptures. I, there's certain things I do every morning. I, I, I have a little couple minutes of gratitude where I'm just thinking, okay, what am I grateful for? And uh, yesterday I was listening to Glenn Beck and uh, he had uh, somebody from uh, Ukraine on that was, a, I think one of the parliament members was, was just talking about, we're going to fight for our freedom because this is the only place we have to go. We're going to fight for our freedom, and I, I'm not I'm not going to try to get too political or anything on our call today. But uh, you know, no matter what side you're on, you got to realize that um, we have an opportunity here in this country, the freest country that's ever existed. Um, and man, we 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 just got to maintain that. Uh, the real estate business that we have, what an amazing opportunity! You know, the freedom in real estate goes hand in hand. I mean, where else can you go? And without even having a degree in high school, you know, being able to jump into a career like real estate and within two years, three years, you're making a quarter of a million dollars a year, half a million dollars a year. Uh, I don't know too many places that the average person can do that. So um, I've got a bunch of bullet points today and uh, I, I wanted to start with my story um, and I'd like you to gleam a couple things from my story. But before we begin, I'm just looking at everybody that's on the call here. Um, if you go ahead and put, if you can put your put your camera on so I can just take a poll so I know where everybody's at. So, um, how many of you have been in the real estate business for less than two years? Okay, couple. 
several actually. Okay, great. And how many of you have um, have have hired a professional coach before in real estate? Okay, a couple. Okay, about the same number on either side. Um, how many of you are doing um, over twenty transactions a year? Okay, great. Super. But yeah, Sean Slade, I'm from uh, Rye, Colorado. We're a little uh, mountain town right down here on the south part of, of Colorado. I do business down here in West Cliff, Colorado Springs, um, in Pueblo area. I don't do Colorado Springs. I, I used to, used to live up there. But uh, been in business for 20 years. Uh, I originally got involved. I was job hopping. I'd done a bunch of things just to try to pay the bills. And it seemed like Every time I turned around, I just couldn't find an opportunity that was that was exciting for me that would provide the benefits and things that my family needed. Uh, my mother-in-law was in real estate up in Parker, and uh, this is the time where we were living down in the Colorado Springs. And uh, I, I was hearing the kind of money she was making. You know, back then, you know, she was making you know twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, and I'm thinking, holy cow, if my mother-in-law can do this, anybody can. So I got my real estate license and I jumped in. Um, I, I didn't realize at the time that the mother-in-laws, uh, even though we love them, sometimes they're not the greatest coaches and mentors. And I realized really quickly that I was probably going to starve to death being an hour away from her and not having the education I needed. So I jumped in right away and I, I hired a coach. Uh, we were broke, um, but I, I jumped in with a Mike Ferry organization, a uh, great co co coaching company. And uh, I started paying a thousand bucks a month for a half hour phone conversation each week with a guy that was making a million dollars a year. And that's one of the best decisions I've ever made. It may not be for everybody on this call, but for me, it was, it was vitally crucial. Some of you have other teachers and people that can hold you, hold your feet to the fire and hold you accountable to your goals. Um, but for me, I needed, sometimes when you put your money on, on the table and put your money on the line, sometimes that's one of those things that's critical to get you where you need to be with your motivation and your inspiration. And so I, I started working with a coach and within, it was about say, probably two and a half years later, we were trucking along at hundred transactions a year with a couple buyers agents and, uh, and life was, life was amazing. Uh, but I and we, we were we were working the business out of our dining room, back when uh, people didn't do that. They worked with big companies that had big offices and that kind of thing. But uh, I, I, I was working our our entire business doing 100 transactions a year out of our dining room in our small house in Colorado Springs. And uh, I, I mean, coaching at, at, what an amazing thing. Um, while we're on that topic, um, anybody heard the story of Aristotle Onassis? Um, he was a billionaire that married uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. And um, he has a story. Um, there was a newspaper reporter that came up to him one time and said, okay, Aristotle, tell me, what would you do? You're, you're a multi-billionaire, but what if you lost it all? What would you do first? And so Aristotle looks at this newspaper reporter and he says, okay, the first thing I would do is go out and get any job I could until I had enough money. The newspaper reporter said, okay, well, until you had enough money to do what? Until I had enough money to go out and buy a nice suit. The newspaper reporter's kind of lost. Okay, well, then what would you do? Well, then I'd go out and I'd work as hard as I could until I had enough money. Okay, well, until you, until you had enough money to do what? Well, until I had enough money to take the richest man in my town out to lunch because crumbs from a rich man's table is more valuable than a feast with fools. And so that's what coaching did for me. Um, you know, some, and some of you that are new in the business, you're, you're, you may be wondering, um, can I do this real estate thing? You know, I've, I've not had success so far. Or, you know, I failed on my first five listing attempts. Uh, that's okay, because you're, you're exactly where you need to be to learn. And the reason I know that is because you're on this call, which tells me that you're, you're, you're looking for knowledge, you're looking for wisdom. And, and that's one of the things that coaching did for me. There, there's so much information. I mean, we turn on YouTube um, every morning after I read my scriptures and have my little gratitude session, I turn on YouTube 
and I feed my mind with business and positive thinking and spiritual spiritual ideas that can that can take me where I want to go. I suggest you start with that. Um, every morning, you, you put yourself in, in, in a place mentally and, and spiritually where you need to be to succeed that day. Um, uh, coaching, um, it, is, it is phenomenal. Coaching takes things to the next level because um, there's a lot of information out there, but what coaching does, it, it really becomes specific, specific and says, okay, what does is, what is, what is Kim need? What does Christy need? What does Robert need in their business today? And then the next thing it does, it holds you accountable. Back in the good days with, uh, with Mike Ferry, um, they used to ask us to send them a checkbook with signed checks for $1,000 out to them. And if we did not do what we promised we were going to do and what we committed to do that week, guess what? They cashed one of our $1,000 checks. Does that create a little bit of motivation around what we're trying to do? And so the first principle I'd like to talk about is how bad do you want it? Um, how bad do you want something? You know, those people over in Ukraine, they, they'll fight to their last breath for their freedom. You've been, you've been blessed with this opportunity in real estate to, to create your world. I mean, this, this is an amazing opportunity. And so how bad do you want it is the first question. And, and how do you keep that motivation and inspiration going on a daily basis? The, the second question then, then is, well, well, what do you want? And so it, it really boils down to, you know, a world of dreams. What are you trying to create? Is, is this just another paycheck for you? And, and I will tell you, it, I think the first step in real estate if we're coming from a job mindset, you know, at a job, it's real easy to be motivated because the boss tells us, hey, go do this or you're fired. And so it's really easy to make sure we get there at eight o'clock in the morning and we do those things that are necessary in that job. That's the problem with real estate. In real estate, nobody's there. So the first thing is, can you treat your business like a job. Matter of fact, can you treat it like a multi-million dollar company that you're in charge of? Can you treat it with the respect that is, is there so that, um, that you motivate yourself to do things on a daily day, day to day basis to be successful? Um, if you don't have an accountability partner, I'm telling you, you're not going to be highly successful. Uh, it could be a spouse. It could, sometimes that's not the best, best, best one, <laughs> but, but maybe um, it could be, it could be one of your teammates in with, with the company, whether if you're an EXP or whatever company you're with, um, find somebody that you resonate with, but maybe somebody you don't like quite as much because what you need is, is a coach that's going to help raise you up. Not somebody that's going to say, Hey, it's okay. You're okay. It's all right. You only had, had one sale last, last month. A, a true friend is somebody that doesn't see you where you're at. A true friend is somebody that raises you up to the next level in your life and, and in your success. And, and that's, the, that's the kind of mentor you need. That's the kind of coach you need. And so if you don't hire on a coach, just make sure you're, you're, you have somebody that you're holding accountable and, and somebody that's holding you accountable. And that could be more than one person. But surround yourself with those kind of things. Um, the first thing I learned from my coaching was, uh, was time blocking because in this business, the, the historic dynamic of this industry is like this is we work real hard and we get a sale, right? We get something under contract. Yeah. Got something under contract and we baby it. We baby it. We baby it. Check our email to make sure there's no problems with our transaction every day and that kind of thing. And then, then what happens? We get about two days before the closing. We realize, Oh my goodness, they were going to close but I have nothing for next month. I got to run out there and make something happen. And so we, we get back on the, on the rat wheel and we run, 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 run until we get another deal. And then we kind of float long until we get that closed. That's, that's a very amateur way of looking at real estate. Uh, so highly successful people, they, they time block. Every day at a certain time, they do something that is designed to build their business. And what they do is something that is worth a lot of money per hour. Uh, when I was involved with coaching with Mike Ferry, um, we tracked every single thing we did. Matter of fact, I, I did not, every, every morning, I, I would start at nine o'clock and I called uh, Sphere of Influence 
And my, my, my conversation with them, hey, Julie, how you doing? How's everything in your world? Hey, great. So I just wanted to check and see, make sure everything's okay. But I also wanted to ask you, would, would you feel comfortable referring my real estate services to somebody you know, if you, you know if somebody's going to be buying or selling a house? Oh, ah, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. So would you feel comfortable referring somebody? Do you mind if I just touch bases with you every every couple months just to, just to see if there's anybody you know? Ah, I sure appreciate that. Great. That's good talking to you. Talk to you later. That was my conversation. And, and when, I was, when I first got started, I would not have lunch until I talked with 25 people directly. And so uh, that, that was, that was, those big numbers. Those don't have to be your big numbers. But uh, for me, I was hungry and I was starving and we were, we were broke. I, I had to make this happen. And so every day, 25 contacts, okay? Uh, a couple years later, I, I moved to a, a, a different coaching company. Um, some of you know there was a little bit of a riff. A Mike Ferry, a Mike Ferry was awesome. What he did, he taught expired for sale by owner, sphere of influence. Get on the phone, call every single day. That, that was his philosophy. And it, it, there, there's something about that philosophy that is really, really important. Because if you're going to succeed in this game of real estate, um, if any of us are going to succeed, we have to do something every single day. And, and it took about, it took my coaches about two years to get me to the point where I would, would uh, make that time very sacred. Nine o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, that's my business building time. If I don't do the most important things at that point, uh, then I'm, I'm not going to be highly successful in real estate. And, and, and so they, they, they didn't want us to schedule buyers there they didn't want us to get scheduled listing appointments they said this is the time you get on the phone and you talk to x number of people um, we, we computed our numbers um and, and my time at that point was worth about 350 dollars per hour when i was on the phone um, i think i've gotten better since then but if we, we started computing what our income was per per month and then we we put that back to how much we were prospecting each you know, each day um, what an amazing opportunity. Um, time blocking. It, you have to learn how to time block. Hopefully it won't take you two years like it did me paying a thousand dollars a month to get my coaches to, to motivate me to keep that time there. Um, accountability. Um, just let yourself be accountable to somebody. Um, uh, the door of success swings on hinges of self-discipline. So what are your habits every day? What do you do every single day? Now, I'd like to open this up just for a second. And uh, my question for you is, um, what do you do every single day that you think is the highest, most important thing you do to generate business in your, in your real estate business? So I'm, I'm going to open it up. And so I'd like you guys to just unmute yourself and <laughs> tell, tell the rest of us. There's no right answer. There's no wrong. There, there's no wrong answer. What do you do? What do you do every day where your time is worth three to five hundred dollars an hour? Sean, what do you think? I saw you unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I, I don't know if this hits anybody in the right direction, but I mean, I have to start off and spend some time in the word and just make sure he's the one guiding me and every decision, everything I'm doing, every call. So it's a, definitely a habit that's, I think, been extremely beneficial for me to try to do it morning and night, even if it's only 15 minutes, but just spend some time in the word and just ask for his steps to guide me, right? To live out his will. That's just been the biggest factor to help kind of kick off my day. And I look forward to it, but it took a while for me to get into that habit. I've talked about it for years and now I've been doing it for probably the last two years, but it's just been phenomenal. John, if I can, if I can add, piggyback on what you just said, that I love it. Um, I was reading this morning in Deuteronomy 8, 18, and I was, I was a little nervous to even bring in a spiritual perspective, but you guys are here on this call to find out what made this work for me. And so if I share something, it may not be your thing, may not, may not be your cup of tea, but I really think that uh, that spiritual insight that Sean suggested is right, at, for me, it's right at the top of the list. And the, the scripture I read this morning is Deuteronomy 8, 18. Uh, Remember the Lord your God. It is he that giveth you power to get wealth. Anyway. 
Next idea, what do you do on a daily basis that is, is, is worth $500 an hour? Marcy. <laughs> well, I have um, my note cards that I fill out each morning. I try to send at least five personal notes to my sphere, just checking in. Um, what are those, what are and those then, note cards say? Um, not a lot. You know, I just try to say, hey, I just want to let you know I'm thinking of you and I appreciate you. And then, you know, about put this sticker with my card on the top and it says oh by the way i'm never too busy for your referrals so you know i i did the mini system with gary jordan and it was just truly amazing i'm i'm in month four of my real estate license so i'm looking forward to that day of having my first transaction but i'm just continuing to touch my sphere um, each day and the pop buys help help a lot too. I love it. What else do you guys do? What is worth five hundred dollars an hour on your on your daily calendar? <clears throat> you know, I what, know what for, for me for me I know I mean again one of the things I'm doing of course I'm I'm reaching out to agents showing them EXP. So I mean there's there's at least you know for me it's at least a couple hours a day that I have blocked out for me personally to do. I know back in the day when I was really doing my real, you know, more active in the real estate business. I mean, we're still doing, we hit icon last year, my wife and I, but I had like, I had at least two hours a day, probably four days a week of calling the leads that were coming in. We had a lot of leads coming in, you know, I had a team. So, you know, my, the big money making time for me was being on the phone. You know, it, it gets, it gets old, it gets monotonous, whatever, but that's where I made my money. You know, every Saturday morning from 930 to 1130, I blocked it out faithfully week after week after week. That was my time to be on the phone. I would catch more people at home on a Saturday morning, you know, than mm -hmm. any other day of the week. And I just blocked it out. And I never let anything get in the way of that. Um, I remember unless I had an out-of-state client coming in there in for the weekend, I'll, I'll change that up and I'll because they need my time as much as possible for the weekend. But otherwise, I blocked it. You know, if somebody, if I had a buyer call me and they want to go look at homes, I'd be like, great, I can do it. I'm, I'm, you know, my morning right now on Saturday is booked, you know, but anytime after 12 noon, you know, let, let's set it up. You know, what, what's good? 12, 1230. And then we go look at homes because they didn't need to know that my, my schedule, my, my appointment that morning was me on my phone. Cause I would make more money on those two hours of phone calls, setting another eight appointments with buyers and sellers than I would by being out there showing those buyers homes for four hours. You know, and so just blocking that time for me, you know, daily. I mean, Monday nights were good back in the day, you know, whatever. But I'd have usually like that four to six, three to five time frame almost every day. I was just I was on the phone because you catch people off work, catch people coming home. And that's when I would get the most people. So I just that was a thing for me four and five days a week. Blocked it out. Yeah. yeah. So if, 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 I'd like you to write down three or four things from what we're discussing you can apply this week in your business. Um, uh, first one, do you need to change your morning routine just a little bit? Second one, um, what, when is your time blocking? Put something in your schedule every day to help you be successful. Um, for sale by owners, I love for sale by owners. I think they're great right now because a lot of them think that the market's so hot, I can do it. And then they go ahead and list their property $50,000 lower than it should have been, right? And so a couple things I do with for sale by owners, uh, and I probably list 70% uh, of list for sale by owners that I go into the first, the, the first very time I meet them. Uh, here, here's a couple things I do with for sale by owners. Um, and first of all, I let them know, hey, I, I've got a lot of buyers in this area. Um, I, I would love to come by and take a look at your home. I know you're not ready to list your home right now, but can I stop by on Tuesday around seven o'clock just to take a look at your home? Maybe take a couple pictures. Fantastic. Great. And then I go in and I say, listen, Julie, um, I know you're on this track selling your home by for sale by owner. Let me ask you, does it have something to do with trying to get the most amount of money from your home and not pay expenses? And that, is that is that why you're doing for sale by owner? Yeah, that's that's kind of it. And we yeah, we, we're going to try it for a week or so and see if it works. Great. Hey, I've got an idea for you. And, and this is what I do. Uh, check with your, your your local team to make sure this is something that is good for you. But I, I say, hey, let, let's let's partner. Let me list your home. I you know 
when, when we list a home, it instantly goes out to 100 different websites. And so we're attracting all of the buyers. Do you know how you're going to get the highest amount of money for your property? Well, you're going to do that by, by, by showing your home to every prospective buyer that is currently looking right now. And how we do that, number one, we maximize not only just the MLS, but we have about 100 different websites we, we, we exercise um, in instantly as, as soon as your listing goes on the market. The other thing I do is, is I market to people that are outside of the area because there's people that are coming in for, from Los Angeles. And Julie, your home's, you know, 500,000 range. Yeah, for this area, that's, that's a nice house. But it, from Los Angeles or from Denver, I mean, 500,000, that's a starter home these days. And so what, what we want to do is we want to attract those people from out there as well. So Julie, here's, here's one of the things I'll do to partner with you. Um, I'll allow you to continue to market the property. If you find the buyer, then we'll do one and a half percent. Um, if I find the buyer, we'll do X. Sometimes I'll do three and a half percent, four percent or something if I originate the buyer. And then if we work with another agent, we'll do six, 5.6, whatever it is. And you, you can make those numbers up. I suggest like it once again, that you talk with the people that you're personally working with in your real estate team, just to make sure they're on board. But I've taken a ton of for sale by owner listings like that because they realize in the back of their mind, I'm not going to be, you know, I might sell it, but how do I do the stupid paperwork? How do I not get sued because I have a lead-based paint disclosure and some of those things? And so by, by partnering up, it, get, it keeps the, the, the perceived control in their hands. They can continue to market the property if they want. If they have friends or the next door neighbor or somebody come by, 1%, sure, I'll, I'll do it for that. 1.5%, not a problem. And we're not, we're not trying to become a discount broker by any means. Don't do that. But what this does, what I've seen in my history, there's a probably not even a 10% chance they're going to sell the property on their own, maybe 10%. So there's a 90% chance you'll have an opportunity to have a transaction there. Um, expired sometime or, or you know, it's probably not the best time for them, but I've had, I've made a lot of money with expires. Um, but, um, so sphere of influence, if I had a dollar for every, for everybody that uh, I'd lost to another agent, because I wasn't keeping in touch with my sphere of influence. Um, right now, um, for me, things have changed just a little bit. Um, we talked about Mike Ferry, great coaching company, but he's very black and white. This is what we do every day. We can't, you know, his, his son, Tom Ferry, years ago, I think has suggested, hey, dad, well, what about the internet? Isn't, it, isn't there some opportunities for, for marketing online, have a website, maybe messenger, texting people, and some of these other things, uh, mailers. And Mike, a little bit hard-nosed, said, nope, we're going to keep on doing exactly what we're doing. Tom says, well, I'm going to start my own coaching company. <laughs> and so you got a dad, you got his son that went totally separate ways. But uh, they both have something very, very valuable. You have to get that heartbeat of knowing when this time hits, I'm going to do this. Tom, he, he expanded things a little bit. Because it's absolutely possible to touch, you know, 300 people at a time when you do a Facebook Live, you take a new listing, or you go into somebody else's listing. If you don't have listings of your own yet, go into somebody, ask, ask them, say, listen, do you mind your, your, the, how the listing you took, it looks like it's beautiful. Do you mind if I paste, post that on my Facebook page? Sure. So you go in, do, do a walkthrough on a Facebook Live. And if you do something like that every week, guess what? Your sphere of influence on Facebook start to realize. She's in the real estate business, right? And so it's, it's a soft touch that they can see. And, 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 you know, they think it's all originating from you, which is okay. Um, uh, so um, a couple things. Uh, so I've gone, is some, some people started saying, well, instead of us doing the calling, is it possible we could hire somebody to do the calling for us so we don't have to do it? Yeah, it's possible. I, I, I think every one of us needs to learn how to do it because there's a communication level that occurs when you, when you internalize a script and you learn that so well that you can communicate and you're on top of the world when you're talking to this expired, this for sale by owner, whatever. But um, it went from there to, can we hire somebody to call for us? To, to all these different websites, there's Zillow, Realtor.com. Um, there's, there's four that I use right now, Zillow, Realtor.com. 
which we hate because we know they're trying to take over our job, right? Bottom line is they have some pieces in place and they are originating a lot of potential buyers and sellers. I also work with sold.com and Z buyer. I, I sold a, I put a, a listing under contract uh, this last week uh, from sold.com and I just put one under contract yesterday uh, from Z buyer. And so those seem to be working pretty well for me as far as uh, seller leads. Is, it, uh, is there one way or another you should be focused right now? Well, if, if you wanna control your business, um, I suggest maybe start to focus with the, uh, the seller leads. That creates more freedom for you to do what you wanna do. Um, how much is your time worth? Um, if the first thing you do is, is respond to your emails and you know, clean up your desk in the morning, your focus is not where it should be. Uh, you're, you know it. Now, if you get up early and, and you're not touching that, that, that special time uh, of time blocking, that's okay. But you have to keep that time sacred. Um, lead follow-up, is that worth $500 an hour? Absolutely. What I do with lead follow-up, because I, I actually have a ton of leads, um, and I spend uh, probably somewhere around $3,000 a month on, on lead generation from Zillow, Realtor.com, Sold, and, and ZBuyer. Um, but you know, if you're making thirty, forty thousand dollars a month, um, is that a an appropriate uh, amount of of investment? Probably. Um, if you're brand new in the business, one thing I'm going to strongly suggest, and, and if if you don't have a lot of available resources, don't spend a lot of money on on some of these sites um, until you've got money coming in. You can go out. There's plenty of free things. You got Craigslist. You got Facebook. You got, you can knock on doors. I, I still love knocking on doors. It's, it's that's one of the, the favorite things I do just to connect with people. There's even during COVID there, there's a certain connection that is there. Yeah. There's 10, there's 10% that say, nah, get out of here. What are you doing knocking on my door? But nine, nine out of 10 people there, they're actually wanting to connect with a human body that, that, that day. And so I've gotten, you know, I've, I've gotten a ton of leads. If they don't, if they don't pick up, I leave a, I've got a, a little um, magnet for the fridge that has a shopping list down below. And I leave that, say, Hey, sorry, I missed you, Sean. Let, let me know what I can do to help. And I leave, I leave that magnet on their door. I've had people call me right off of that, that I, I that weren't even home when I, when I stopped in, um, uh, worth at least 500 bucks an hour. Um, for, for, so with all the leads that I have coming in, what I do is I call them immediately. And I try to connect right then. I try to set an appointment right then if they want to see a house, if they want to list a house, I try to set it right then. And if I don't, if I, if they don't pick up, I, I, I leave a voicemail. It's probably best to try to call back again later that day, but I have so many leads. I just don't have time to do it, do it perfectly. And so I, I leave a voicemail and then I, I schedule a text to go out in about an hour later. And then I schedule a second text to go out the next day. Hey, just notice you called on so-and-so street. Uh, by the way, uh, there's another property that's coming on the market. And what are you doing with that? You're now becoming, you're, you're positioning yourself as the expert. What are, these, what are these buyers frustrated with? House goes on the market and there's 20 offers, right? Now they're, in, now they're in the fighting ring trying to find a fight for their life, right? But what if you come off as somebody that knows about properties that aren't on the market yet? Okay. And so when you leave a voicemail, when you, when you do something, Hey, uh, I know about properties that are coming on the market a lot of times before they even hit the market. Matter of fact, there's one down on the Creek here that might be pretty interesting for you. And at that point, I'm, I'm setting myself up as an expert uh, that has something that 80% of the agents don't have because 80% of the agents, they're just using the MLS and that's all these buyers have been fed just leads that are showing up on the MLS. Um, Sellers, um, um, listing appointments. A couple things, uh, most important thing, uh, can, you, can you connect with that person? Can you be real? Um, you know, back in the day, I, I bought a Cadillac, an expensive car. Um, you know, I just gave the car, I was taking on listing appointments to one of my kids that was going off to college. It was, it's a 2009 Camry. Look sharp. It had an old lady had it in a garage for several years, but had 140,000 miles on it. You know, especially if you're brand new, don't think you have to go all out and impress people. Um, it's your confidence, it's your genuineness that's going to be 10 times more valuable. Um, 
Sometimes if I'm dealing with a big multi-million dollar listing, I may dress in a suit. So most of the time, at least where I'm at down here in, in Rye, Colorado, I've got my jeans on and I've got my uh, a decent looking shirt, maybe a sweater or something like that. Um, I, I wanna try to stay on their level. Uh, sometimes that BMW that you're driving, sometimes that'll go against you. Just like, uh, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your dentist drives up in a BMW, what are you thinking? <laughs> my, my, the, the $400 feeling I just had to pay, that's making this car payment this month. <laughs> and, and, and so it, it, it can go against you if you're trying to impress people. You don't need to impress people. You need to be genuine. You need to talk from your heart. Um, the old style of connecting with people. Oh, man, is that you in that picture? Did you catch that fish? is you know, maybe not the best way. Sometimes it's, it's learning how to speak at the same speed that they're speaking. Maybe it's, uh, you know, um, if, if, they're, if they're a fast talker, if they're, if they're type A personality, do you know your different personality types? Can you speak to them? Um, I've gotten pretty good at relating to 90% of the people. Um, and as you, as you understand these personality types and that kind of thing, to be able to connect with them, you know, how they communicate, how they think, they do, are they detail oriented? Are they more fun oriented? Do they need to have, do they, do they need more smiles? What, what kind of personality is this? Um, that is the, the, the new form of being able to instantly connect with people rather than, hey, did you catch that fish on the wall? Uh, kind of thing. Um, uh, just have confidence and expect them to list with you. Um, just, you know, it's, it's okay to smile and say, listen, I'd like to list your property today. I know you've got five other people that are standing in line wanting to list, but my objective today is to show you that I'm the person that would like to take care of this important investment for you. What we got on for organization. I've got a big uh, eight by four board on our office wall. That we keep all of our transactions. I, I sell somewhere around 70 homes a year. And, um, and my wife is my transaction coordinator. I don't have any buyer's agents this time. Um, if my, my two cents on that is, you know, this is kind of a volatile uh, world right now. I might suggest before you start bringing on a lot of staff, wait until you absolutely have to have somebody. Um, there does come a point where your time is so valuable, you can't do these things. First person I bring on is a transaction coordinator. When you start the losing sales opportunities because of that, because you're, you're filling out paperwork and that kind of thing, maybe that's the first step. Um, what step do you bring in that person? Yeah, 30 transactions maybe, 40, and you pay them probably per transaction, not by the hour. Um, when do you bring in a buyer's agent? Like I say, I'm doing about 70 right now. I'm, I'm right at the point where I'm really wishing I had a buyer's agent because I have too many leads coming in. I just can't handle them. I want to spend more time doing what Jeff is doing, building my future and building my freedom than uh, selling another house. And maybe I know our time is wrapping up, but let's, let's maybe just end with, uh, with that, that piece is um, what, what is your exit strategy? Uh, there's a guy by the name of T. Harv Ecker that wrote a book called uh, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. And in one of his audio programs, it was, it was really great. In, in his audio program, he suggested how you start a venture is majorly significant because your vision is, will determine where you're going to be at in one year, two years, five, 10 years. And so uh, maybe as you're walking away from our training today, uh, maybe spend some time. If you don't have a goal card, in, in front of you on your desk that shows you exactly, this is why I'm doing this. Real estate's great. You can make a lot of money, you know, and you can do great things when you're making three, $400,000 a year. But what does that really mean for you? What, what, what is that cash equivalent for you? Are you trying to buy back your time? Are you trying to buy back your life? Are you trying to spend more time? Are you trying to have retirement? Um, so instead of your, your sole focus on be, being selling another house, maybe make sure every day you're spending a little time. Okay, do we need to spend a little bit more, more time investing over here? Are we going to buy an investment property this year? Um, 
<laughs> I know this is not an EXP training, Jeff, but I, I just and I know most of the real estate companies they have an ability to actually invest in the stock. I just got to tell you, one of the worst decisions I've made in the last few years, in the last two years I've been in with EXP. Um, but you, Jeff originally told me you really ought to spend five percent of your transaction and invest it in the stock. I said, no, nah, I don't like the stock market. <laughs> I don't trust it. But, uh, you know, it was interesting. Um, after the first year, you know, just because of our involvement, uh, I knew there was some money I had invested in the, in the company. And I said, Jeff, where, where do you go? And this is after one year. I, I, I have never figured out how to look and see how much money I had in our investment, investment plan. I, I have not invested one cent into the stock. Um, after one year, um, I looked and, and I had over $20,000 in that in that stock portfolio. And he said, that's great, Sean, but you know, you would have had the $250,000 if you would invest 5% of your transactions. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, 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 will, will the stock always go up? No, stock goes up. Will, will, will the real estate you buy always go up? You know, it doesn't. But uh, long haul is it more valuable for you to buy a donut or to invest something in your future so that you have an exit strategy so that sometime down the road you can say hey i'm gonna go play on the beach for six months and i'm not taking any phone calls i'm gonna go spend time with my kids so that's what i want to do anyway that's about all i had jeff uh, hopefully i shared some valuable insights there but Open questions, whatever I can do. Lots of, lots of nuggets. Um, turn on your cameras, guys, if you can. Um, let's let's talk for a few minutes here before we wrap things up. What what? Are, let me ask you guys. I mean, just you know, talking about time blocking, like, like, why is that so important? What do you guys see? I mean, just throw that. Out. Why is it so important to really block out your time and to have things scheduled? I mean, just anybody. Sean, go ahead. <clears throat> Oh, he's got something to say. I saw you. I saw you unmute yourself. So yeah. And I tell you, I I'm I'm in. I'm big into coaching. I appreciate you, Sean. Thank you for what you shared. I took a bunch of notes. I'm gonna steal a bunch of it if that's okay, and and give it to my meeting that comes up right after this one. Um, yeah, time blocking is intentional, right? I mean, there's a lot of good things to say about it, but you know, I didn't answer earlier when you were asking about what do we do to make. Um, where to focus, how do we get people to focus on things to make money. I always, you know, share with everyone, we need to do things that make the most money per hour. And, you know, Sean, your thing was flo focused more on prospecting and things like that, which is everyone should be building that into their business when they're starting out and even as they keep going to, in order to continue to grow. Um, I didn't do it that way for me, but what I did may not be duplicatable, but what you shared is, I mean, it's very duplicatable. Anybody can do that. Um, and uh, time blocking allows you to have specific purpose and time to do what gives you the most money per hour. So I think that's the easiest way I could probably answer that. Yeah. I think it's important to like to be organized. You know, one of the things that I see, and, and I, I went through this early on, had to learn it, you know, I'd never really built a business, but I think one of the things for me early on, especially was, you know, just you're flying by the seat of your pants. I mean, it just, it felt so like chaotic to me for so much of the time. I had to realize like, man, I've just got to, I've got to get myself organized and just, again, blocking out certain parts of the day that this is what I'm going to do during these times of the day. One of the things I see sometimes in this business is again, and we talk about this is, you know, you let the business run you and therefore you run a very unprofessional business. You know, it's just like, you're all over the board and your family pays the price. You, you know, your wife and kids pay the price. You're, you know, after a while, that just leads to a lot of resentment. You can get burnt out. It's like when I block it out and I run it and treat it like a business, man, it just feels so much better and so much different. You know, we don't need to fly out every time that buyer calls and says they want to see something. I mean, I get it in this market. You got to be ready to do some of that kind of stuff because things are going to go under contract. But I think we just we tend to just like just we're flying all over the place. I like to get organized the night before. You know, there's so many times the night before I'll look on my schedule. I've got it on my phone. I might make some notes, whatever. And I just know like, this is what tomorrow's going to look like. And it's just, it's blocked out like that. You know, um, I think early on, it's just, it's real easy to, I think too, in this, you know, Sean, like, like you know, getting up in the morning, like a bit, again, how, how many of you guys would have fired yourself? I mean, or, or have fired yourself before. I mean, cause again, we're our own bosses. How many of you would have been fired if you would have had a boss, <laughs> if you were running your business or running, you know, the way you you know have run it in the past? I mean, I think I see that all the time with this, where 
I think, you know, we, I mean, again, here's a good example. There, there's a lady, and I've talked about her, I think, before on here. I did an interview with her a couple weeks ago. She's here in Colorado Springs. Her name's Kelly Cortner. She got licensed June of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, we were still shut down. We couldn't do open houses, like all the things, right? We were still figuring all that out. She got licensed June of 2020. She did 42 deals her first 12 months. You know, like how, how, and again, there's all kinds, to me, it takes away every excuse out there in terms of why I can't make this work. I mean, but here's the thing, and Sean, you hit it like, you know, how bad do you want it? She wanted it bad, you know, single mom, you know, she had to make this work. Sean, you were, you were broke at the beginning. You know, I, for me, my wife, I wanted my wife to be able to be home with our kids. I tell that story all the time. They were six and three. I had to make this work. And some of us, I think we just, we get comfortable. We don't have to make it work. So therefore we just, we kind of just, you know, we don't even start our day until noon or later, you know, it's hey, like, yeah. The, yeah, go ahead. I've got me. a good in- input there, but yeah, I like to talk kind about of throw that. out is like, we, we talk about motivation. I use that for everything that I do, right? It's not just me waking up and working. I, it could be working with buyers. If I don't know what their motivating factor is, then I can't really determine how much we could put into it. You know, the seller, I, if I don't know the motivating factor, then it's the same thing. I mean, what are they really serious about getting out or are they, you know, they, they just want to sit and get every last dollar they can out of it, you know, and, and stress everyone out. Um, your why has got to be greater than someone's no. OK, I mean, that's that's been I, I've, I've used that in a number of different ways. You know, someone tells, you no, your why is greater. So it gives you purpose and direction that we're going to keep going. Right. OK, no problem. It's a not today. Maybe we just don't take things personal. We're going to move forward. So, you know, you got to have a why. And it's like you were saying, Jeff, I mean, you may not have to get out of bed and do things because you have plenty of money in the bank. and There's nothing driving you. But, you know, we all have to have something that drives us and it can't just be money. It's got to be, you know, what life do we want to create for our family? Do we want to leave a legacy? You know, me doing nothing and pouring into my kids is not a legacy having more time with them and teaching and coaching, you know, the agents on my group or, you know, my family, that, that is a legacy, right? So your why has got to be greater than the no's that you will get. Definitely. How many of you guys, you know, how many of you guys have had a coach before? Just again, show hands, the ones that have your cameras on anybody. That, that was big. I mean, cause I've had that. Yeah. Robert, you've had that. Robert, open up your mic. How, how do you have a coach right now, Robert, or have you had one in the past? Not at the moment. I've had one in the past before. Okay. Um, again, just having that accountability factor. Um, and then also, I guess there's just a lot of times when you don't really know what direction to go into. And I feel mm-hmm. having a coach there to give you a couple options always keeps you busy. Yeah. It's one of the nice things I think about EXP is like, there's lots of ways to get accountability here. You could, we could partner up guys. I mean, seriously, there's so many people in the group and you know, get, as you're getting to know different people that just, Hey, you know, just meet them for coffee or get on zoom, whatever. And man, let's, let's be accountability partners like this. Let's help each other with this. Where do you want to go with your business? Here's where I want to go with mine. How can we help each other and have some accountability? You know, I mean, I had a coach, you know, Craig Proctor, I was part of that program for nine years. And every Friday I had a call with my coach and there was a lot of accountability there. You know, we didn't have to write checks like that, Sean. Like that was pretty wild. Thousand dollar checks, you know. But what a great motivator to get the thing done, you know. But we had accountability, like with ours, like, you know, here's we would go over different ads we were running. We would go to how many calls did we make, how many appointments did we have, how many homes did like it was just a list of things that we had to go through. And and we set those goals and we worked on that together with the coach, you know. And then here's what I said I'm going to do. Okay, now I'll call you next Friday and let's see how you did with that. And it was one of those things where like, you know, we're going to if I'm not doing it, it was like, you know, they're, they're going to drop me off the list. It's like, well, you're obviously not serious about this. And I just, and I had to make it work and I wanted it so bad. I just went for it. And so, man, it just, it pushed me. And so I, yeah, I did like, I don't know, I did 32 deals my first year, made well over a hundred thousand my first year in the business, you know? Um, and it just built from there, you know, 72 deals my third year. And it was just that accountability and that coaching. Now, some of you guys can't afford to get a thousand dollar a month coach or more than that. And I get that. Um, but I would tell you, there's lots of ways to get accountability here in EXP with other people right here in this group. Okay. And on the freedom team page, you can reach out to people, whatever, all the phone numbers are in there. You know, if you click on somebody's contact, you got their phone number right there. 
you could do that. But also the coaching right now, like YouTube didn't exist when I got started in real estate. There's so much coaching that you could get right there in terms of how to do different things. And of course, with EXP, I mean, my God, the, the 80 hours a week of classes in there, phenomenal. You know, so many good things in there and so many ways to do it. Um, so the, the, the tools are definitely there for those who want to do it. Um, Mark, can you unmute yourself for a minute? Well, hey, this, Jeff, how you just, doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Good, good. Just what, what's a couple of things? How long have you been in the business, Mark? Uh, just four years. Four years. What What are a couple of things maybe that, that you, what's a couple of nuggets you got out of this? There was a lot of good stuff here today. Yeah. Um, well, I think the, uh, you know, some things that we definitely do every day and, and uh, both the Sean's kind of mentioned it is, uh, um, you know, just kind of take a time to, you know, reflect and do some reading and um, get your mindset right to start the day. Um, don't turn on, don't turn on the news. Don't check, uh, don't check your apps. Uh, that stuff can wait and it doesn't wait long, but I mean, if you can wait till o'clock, it's huge. <laughs> so yeah. that huge. Um, um, a couple notes that, uh, a couple notes that I wrote down, um, you know, this accountability partner, uh, I haven't had a professional coach or, uh, an accountability partner. So I can see, I guess I'm not totally sold on the coach thing yet, but I can definitely, um, I can definitely see that having an accountability partner of, you know, somebody that I love and trust that can hold me, hold me accountable would be, would be huge. Um, the, uh, um, we've done a little bit in the for sale by owners. So I just like some of the, some of the nuggets that was talked about there. And, uh, we're, uh, we're great at connecting with people. Um, you know, that's, a that's definitely a, a strength of ours. Um, you know, I'm writing as I'm, you know, I just wrote in a few, you know, handwritten cards to a couple of clients right now just you know something simple but just to keep in touch with the people so i mean all the nuggets are great so i appreciate everybody sharing yeah good stuff one of the things you know and i just i grabbed this because you know i mean again you can see all the books over here there's and then this side over here which you can't see there's books over there as well i just and i a lot of these i haven't read yet i mean i'm, I'm read i love to read i think you know getting that mindset right first thing in the morning I do the yeah. same thing as Sean. I, for me personally, and again, not to put that on anybody else, but I'm always in the Bible every morning. You know, I've got, you know, then I got other books. I got personal development books I'm reading. It's just, it's really a couple hours for me, usually in the morning from 6 to 8, 630 to 830, somewhere in there, 630 to, you know, 8, you know, hour and a half, two hours, usually just about every morning and wow. then get going with my day. I mean, that's how I do it. But one of the things, you know, this book right here, Eat, Eat That Frog, and I've talked about this before, you know, 21, get, 21 great ways to stop procrastinating, get more done in less time. There you go, <laughs> you got it too. That's hilarious. So, but one of the things he talks about in here again, is like, you know, th that thing that you're just dreading to do, like just knock it out. Those calls that maybe you don't wanna make, just knock them out first thing, eat the frog first thing in the morning. You know, do the thing you don't wanna do, just get it done. And now the rest of your day, you know, you're not just dragging on that, you know, dragging, dragging, dragging. But now it's, you know, well, I'll do it tomorrow because they just didn't get to it. I just don't even want to do it. But just do it. You know, you could block out that hour of just calls to FISBOs or calls to expireds or, you know, again, whatever you need to do. But just, you know, it's, it's a great book. You know, it's it's an easy read. But, you know, I don't know, time management. A lot, a lot this, of it's in there. Prob this is probably a book that. Miracle really Morning. Excellent book. Miracle Morning changed. Uh really changed my uh i'd say it's probably changed our life yeah. um i was uh working on this life wheel earlier this morning just mm -hmm. you know just looking at the important things that are in your life and uh so i have not been a big reader in my life uh, up until a couple of years ago i think i only read probably three books in my life right and uh, i read a lot you know magazines articles uh, but uh cover to cover i haven't but i started about two years ago and i think i probably read eight books last year and uh i just read probably for you know probably for 35 minutes you know a part of a yeah. chapter 20 pages but if you can do 
if you can do 10, 20 pages every day over time, it chunks away at the book. So oh, totally. it's, you think about that 10 pages a day, which everybody on this, everybody in here could do that 10 pages a day, you're done in 15, 20 minutes tops, but 10 pages a day, you know, let's, if you do that every day, what is, you know, 3,650 pages a year, how many books is that? You know, like there's no way that doesn't take, you know, yourself personally up a notch by the end of the year. There's no way, you know, and, and we always used to say, you know, 10 minutes a day that and then, you know, 30 minutes a day of audio, which you could do like in your car. I mean, I just I rarely listen to music in my car. I just don't. I, I just I mean, every now and then the weekends, I mean, stuff. But when I'm driving around between appointments, I've got audios in there that I'm listening to. You know, I got Audible. I've got I don't know. There's I got 70, 80 books now on Audible. You know, and I tend to listen to those same kind of thing. It's a lot of this stuff over here, which you can even do. You know, the, there's an app out there called Libby, um, which if you most of the libraries across the country, you can connect to your local library through Libby, you know, get a free library card and you can you can check out books and audio books on Libby for free for three weeks and you just download them into your phone. And after three weeks, they go away. But it gives you three weeks to read a book or listen to an audio. And again, I just I find myself doing that all the time. That's just for free. Um, but anyway, lots of ways to do it. So but um, guys, we'll wrap it up a little after 10 o'clock here, uh, Mountain Time. But totally appreciate you guys being on here always. Um, next week, Kathleen Harrison will be on next week. Um, hopefully she stays healthy um, between her schedule, different things. You know, she was on here way back in like November and shared a few things about, um, you know, how she was converting so many online leads. I mean, she was way above the norm on that. And uh, a lot of people have asked for like, man, how'd you do that? Let's do another training with her. So she's going to be back to basically do part two of that um, and really, you know, hone in on how she's, you know, converting all these uh these internet leads and stuff, which is a, a big piece of her business. So we'll be back next week with that. Um, I will be in Cabo, so I will not be on here. Sorry, somebody's got to do it. But um, anyway, uh, but Kathy Carter is going to get on here, kind of run things. Sean will probably be on here as well, but we will be back you know, next week for the training, uh, even though I won't be on here. Same Zoom ID and everything. But Sean Slade, thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time. You've got a great business, you know, 70 homes a year, you know, down there and uh, you're, you're working away and a great addition, obviously, to EXP. Um, yeah. Take that 5%, Sean, buy that stock. You know, it, it'll pay off. I am. <laughs> hey, anything I can do to help guys, uh, just call our any time. Cool. Right thank you so right. much, man. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a great day. Have a good rest of your week. Hey, a couple things real quick, just to remind you too, um, if you haven't seen it on the Freedom Team page, um, just so you know, um, you know, uh, Thursday morning course, agent attraction training for those of you who want to do that um, at noon, my time, two o'clock Eastern, um, I will be doing just a live webinar um, for an EXP, you know, presentation. So if you want to get anybody on there, the, the Zoom link is in the uh, in the details there. It's not this Zoom. It's a different Zoom link. Um, so but that's in there as well. If you want to get any prospects on there to take a look at EXP. Um, I'll be on there Thursday at uh, 2 Eastern doing that live. If anybody wants to get some people on there, um, feel free to do that. So, okay. Um, but that's it. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. All right. We'll see you. Thank you.